Suppose a tank contains 100 gallons of a solution of dissolved salt and water. So we have a salt water mix that's going to be inside this tank. And the, the salt water is, is going to be stirred uniformly. And so from that, we want, to, we want to interpret that as meaning that the salt is evenly distributed throughout the entire tank. It's not like our pitcher of Kool-Aid that we haven't touched in three days or all the sediment has come to the bottom. Suppose all the water is uniformly stirred so that there's salt distributed evenly throughout. And so if we just stop there for a moment and consider what we have here. We have this tank of water. Get something like this. And we have water like that. And like we said, initially, there's going to be 100 gallons of water uh, inside of this tank. I guess gallons is a capital G. And this is, this is going to happen at the start of our experiment, so when time equals zero. So suppose that water is allowed to flow into this tank, and we're doing it at a rate of four gallons per minute. Four gallons per minute we have this intake of water and it's pure water, right? And so the mixture flows out of the tank also at a rate, we're draining the tank here. We're draining the tank at a rate of three gallons per minute. And so what we're gonna ask is how much, how much salt is gonna be in the system after T minutes if there are 15 pounds of salt originally. So we started off with 15 pounds of salt and this salt is going to be evenly distributed, uniformly distributed throughout the water. So we have this concentration of salt that's going to be in play here. And that's actually what we're going to ask about. Um, let's introduce a function y of t. This is, going to be the, this is going to be the number of pounds of salt at time t, at t minutes. All right. So we're gonna to try to predict what this function, are. we wanna come up with a function for this salt here. And so some things we know is we have this initial value when y of zero is equal to 15 pounds. We know this. And we're gonna to try to figure out what is the salt. Cause again, that's how much it asks us, right? How much salt will remain in the tank after t minutes? We're trying to find this function y of t. That's the answer to this question. Now the complication is the following. When, when we take water entering the system, it's pure water. That means it's not salt water, right? There's no salt coming in. So we have zero pounds of salt leaving the mixture at any given moment. But how much salt is exiting the system? That kind of depends. That's a little bit harder of a question here. Because while we know no salt's coming in, there's salt in the system. And it's not like it just all leaves at once, right? Uh, what's happening is, the amount of salt that's gonna leave depends on the concentration of salt that we have. And so let's try to, let's try to simplify this, uh, this consideration the following way. Although it might be difficult to describe the function y of t, we are in a position where we can describe the derivative of y with respect to time. So the net rate in which, the, in which y is changing is given by the following relationship. We have the rate the rate of salt that's entering the system, and then take away from that the rate of salt that's exiting the system, right? And so like we observed right here, the amount of salt entering the system is zero. And how much salt is exiting the system? Again, this is, this is the tricky part, but we can handle it uh, in the following way. Well, we know that there's three gallons of water leaving at any moment, this has something to do with the volume, right? If we take volume of T to be the number of gallons of water at T minutes, right? So if we if we take the volume right here, uh, then we can kind of say something like the following. We could take, well, because we have to know, we, we don't know how much we don't know how much is leaving necessarily at, at this moment right here because the concentration depends. We know that we're losing three gallons of water, but how much salt, how much salt is in that three gallons that's leaving? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it into a type of concentration problem. We're gonna take the pounds of salt divided by the volume, right? This is gonna be pounds per gallon. This is a concentration of the amount of salt 
concentration that's in the amount of salt at that given time. And then we're going to multiply this by the amount that we're losing. We're going to be losing three gallons per minute. So compare the units right there. Like if the gallon cancel out, you're going to get pounds per minute. That's how many how much salt is exiting here. And so if we were to simplify what we have right here, what we can say is the following. We can say that dy dt is equal to negative 3y over volume. So this right here is a differential equation. The rate in which water, uh, the rate at which the salt is changing with respect to time is equal to negative three times the current amount of salt divided by volume. And volume here is a function of time as well. And so in order to, and we have this initial value, remember, that y of zero is equal to 15 pounds. So in order to answer this question about how much salt is in the tank at any given moment, uh, we have to solve this initial value problem, this differential equation here. Now I do want to mention that this is actually a quite reasonable problem right here, this type of thing. We have some salt water right here. We have water exiting. We have water entering. Um, we're pouring pure water in and we're exiting stuff out right here. Imagine we're running some type of aquarium, like maybe we work at SeaWorld, right? Um, we have these marine mammals, these marine animals, fish, uh, maybe coral, starfish, whatever, right? Uh, a, a sea snail. We have all these different marine creatures that have to live in salt water, but we have essentially uh, pure water at our disposal that we could add to it. Now, the thing is, the, the, the the saline solution here, the amount of salt is going to, the concentration, I should say, of salt is really what's in concern here because for marine creatures to survive, they need a certain concentration. They can't live in pure water. Most of them can't, of course. So we need some concentration to be greater than zero. But also, they can't just live in pure salt. Like, I mean, you just, just throw them in a bag of salt, they're going to die as well. So we need the ratio between salt and water to be perfect, right? And so what happens is over time, uh, there's evaporation that happens. So the sun heats up the water and some of the water is evaporated. So that raises the concentration. Also, the fish kind of do their business amongst other things in the water. So again, the pH and other, you know, uh, salt and other chemicals, it kind of changes the balance over time. In which case, the then the, the marine biologists have to correct. So the concentration is right for these creatures to survive. So we add pure water in it, but we can't just like, take the fish out like a sort of Finding Nemo situation and just drain the tank and clean it out there, right? Because, I mean, that gets expensive. The fish could die. They could escape to go find their lost father. There's all these things that could happen. So in some respect, we have to fix the water. Uh, we have to clean the water while the fish are still in there. So we're going to drain the water while we're adding new water to it. And so we have to know when's the right moment to stop it so that we can calculate the concentration. Okay, we need – if we have like 100 gallons – we want to have 15 pounds of salt, we can find that concentration of pounds per gallon. So we want to add some water until and find the moment where it's at the right concentration. That's what we're trying to do right now. And so when you look at it that way, we say it's a quite reasonable, reasonable problem. And as we've seen, as we've set it up, we have to solve this differential equation right here. Now it turns out we're going to start off this by doing a simpler differential equation. Let's look on the volume for a moment. So we can say something on volume, D dv dt we know that there's the rate in which water comes in and then you take away the rate in which water exits this might seem simple but be aware this is a differential equation we have the rate in which water comes in we have the rate in which water comes out the net rate because we have four gallons coming in per minute we lost three gallons per minute and so we see there is one gallon of water increase each minute. This is a pretty simple differential equation, right? It's also separable, mind you, right? Um, if you separate the variables, you get dv equals dt. Uh, integrate this puppy. You're going to end up with volume equals t plus a constant, right? What is that constant? We're going to use the initial value. We started off with 100 gallons of water. So when t equals zero, we're going to have 100 gallons, which is just to say that c equals 100. And our volume function, v of t, is going to equal 100 plus t, or t plus 100 if you prefer. 
So we can solve a very simple differential equation. That was the initial value problem. We're going to put it in here. That way we can express our differential equation with respect to y without any reference to volume anymore. So if we rewrite that, we're going to get that dy dt equals negative 3y over 100 plus t. And so this is now the differential equation we need to solve. Notice that this is also a separable differential equation. You can cross multiply like so, and we end up with, I guess, I guess that's actually, not, we don't want to cross multiply. We just actually just want to times, uh, we're going to times both sides by dt, right? So that they cancel over here. We also want to, we want to divide both sides by y, divide both sides by y. In which case, then the y's cancel over here. Uh, then we'll end up with dy over y. This is equal to negative 3 over 100 plus t, like so, dt. Um, integrate both sides because we did separate the variables. Oh, boy. Uh, the right-hand side then becomes the natural log of the absolute value of y. This is going to equal... Uh, you might need a u substitution to help you out here if you're struggling at all. 100 plus t for, for u du with an equal dt. In which case, the right-hand side, likewise, uh, should look like negative 3, the natural log of the absolute value of 100 plus t plus a constant. Now, in this situation, notice that our t value is going to have to be greater or equal to zero. We can't go back in time without a flux capacitor or anything like that. And so because of that, we actually can relax this. If we have a, if we have a plus, if we forgot the absolute value, you can get away with that. Same thing kind of over here, right? Um, y can never be negative. We can't have like negative 13 pounds of salt in the, in the tank. So if we forgot the absolute value, we'd be, we'd be okay right here. Now, in order to help us solve this thing, we want to, well, we want to solve for, for y. And in course doing so, we have to get rid of the natural log and the absolute value. This gives us uh, something of the form. Well, let, let's actually pause, pause there for a second. We have this initial value c. Um, we could solve for y, but actually, I want to solve for c first. Uh, from the initial value we had before, right, notice that y of 0 is equal to 15. So if we use that initial value, y equals 15 when t equals 0. So we're just going to get 100 right here. We can then use this to solve for, for c. Um, adding 3 natural log of c to both sides, or natural log of 100, excuse me, you get c equals the natural log of 15 plus 3 times the natural log of 100. Using some properties of logarithms, you can actually bring the 3 inside as an exponent, and then you can combine the two logarithms. So this is going to look like the natural log of 15 times 10 to the third. And 10 to the third here is just going to mean you're going to add a, well, a bunch more zeros. The natural log of 15, and then we should get 6 zeros. So we get the natural log of 15 million, or 10 times, uh, you could also think of it as the natural log of 15 times 10 to the sixth, if you prefer that, or 1.5 times 10 to the seventh, which, whichever you prefer. With this solution in my mind, we can then put it over here, in which case we get the natural log of y equals negative 3 times the natural log of 100 plus t. Uh, plus the natural log of this one, uh, 15 times 10 to the 6th. One of the advantages of doing it this way, if I can see first, is you actually notice that if we bring in the 3 again as an exponent, we could write the right-hand side as a common logarithm. Uh, it's all the natural log now. So we would end up with uh, 100 pl plus t to the negative 3 times that by this 15 times 10 to the 6th. This is all equal to the natural log of y. And so the, in this case, the natural logs now all cancel out. And we get the expression, or the equation, y equals 1.5 times 10 to the 7th over 100 plus t cubed. And so now we have solved our 
initial value problem, in which case this gives us the solution to our differential equation. And so we could ask ourselves, okay, after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, how much salt is in the system? After 10 minutes, how much salt? All right, so if we let it, if we let it run for 10 minutes, what's gonna happen? Well, according to this model here, what we're gonna see is that Y would equal, uh, well, you're gonna take 1.5 times 10 to the seventh all over, well, 110 to the third. I guess I didn't need parentheses for that. Like so, in which case this gives you an estimate of 11.27 pounds, right? In which case that gives us how much pounds there are. If we wanted concentration, we could do V O or Y over V. You get this 11.27 over the 110, and you can compute that as well. With this equation, we can compute we can predict how much salt with very good accuracy, right? How much salt we're gonna have uh, at any given moment of time and which helped us with the problem we have right here. And so it all comes down to solving a differential equation. And how did the differential equation get into play again? Remember, what we knew about the original problem is we knew how much stuff was coming in, how much stuff was exiting. And because we knew the, we knew how much was coming in at the rate at which they're coming in, and the rate they're coming out, we're able to calculate the net rate, the rate of salt coming in versus the rate of salt coming out. Now, the reason differential equation was necessary here is because we didn't know how much salt was coming out. We didn't know the rate coming out as a specific number, but we were able to write this as a, using a function of the original. Uh, we were able to write as a ratio of the original function y. So this example illustrates that differential equations are very, very important for modeling many, many numerical phenomena um, and like in this one, they sometimes can be separable differential equations for which we can use those techniques to solve them. And so that brings us to the end of lecture 26. Uh, in lecture 27, we're going to continue down this vein. We're not going to do salt examples necessarily, but we'll show you some more examples of how we can, we can make uh, statements about growth or decay, like how much stuff over time will change. Uh, based upon some information about the derivatives, some assumptions we can make there. We'll look at some growth models, uh, and I'll see you all then. Bye, everyone.